what does this mean, this truth? Um, it, it, it's, it's actually, this is the revolutionary part. Uh, what does it mean that we can create this world that's, now we have infinitely many lines drawn. Just like we have a Euclidean plane, the flat plane, um, after people started to deal with the, the ideas, uh, they develop a model for the hyperbolic plane. Now, one model for the hyperbolic plane turns out to be um, what we call the um, upper half space. Well, let, let's go back to the world we are very familiar with, the Euclidean plane. So we've done a violent act. We've, we've allowed coordinates to, um, numbers to be used as coordinates. And this is the Euclidean flat plane. So we're now just going to um, consider the set of points um, above the real line. So this is the upper half space. So these are points. Now, to make it the Euclidean plane, we have to introduce another type of structure. And that's the structure of what is called a, a metric or a distance. So the, the way the Euclidean distance function works is similar to um, the, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We can write down um, a metric, a Euclidean, uh, non-Euclidean metric on this set of points so that the model of um, Lobachevsky and uh, Bolai's geometry is manifested. Before we try to draw the um, hyperbolic plane, let's draw a different plane. Let's draw an elliptic plane, another non-Euclidean plane. Uh, it's more familiar maybe. It's, well, the sphere. So if we take the sphere as a model of um, the world we live, then we, we can create a triangle, for example. And uh, if we start with a, a point here at the North Pole, now I'm going to draw a straight line. There's a straight line on the, um, on, the, on the sphere. Here's another straight line on the sphere, longitude lines. Another straight line on the sphere is this equator. And if we pay close attention, we see that the intersection of the longitude and the latitude, these, these lines intersect at 90 degrees. And this triangle that's formed now has um, more than 180 degrees. So in this plane, a couple things have happened. First of all, straight lines don't look straight. And uh, triangles have more than 180 degrees. So what's the deal? Um, it really comes down to this notion of, uh, of a metric and how we measure lengths. And if we think about the world, we think, well, people used to think the world was flat. Locally, it looks flat. We don't fall off anywhere. But if we go up high enough, we look back, we see the, the curvature of the Earth. It's the curvature of the Earth which is changing straight lines, which is in turn changing triangles. And this can be measured in a precise way. In a hyperbolic plane, so in this model here with a hyperbolic metric, it turns out that straight lines in the hyperbolic plane in this model of the hyperbolic plane look like this. Well, Euclidean vertical lines that intersect this boundary at 90 degrees or um, Euclidean circles centered on the uh, real line. So centered at the real line means that we would intersect at 90 degrees. So these are straight lines in hyperbolic space. Okay, so let's take um, this as our given straight line. And let's take this point as the point not on the straight line. So we've drawn one straight line um, parallel to the given one. They're parallel in that they don't intersect. But now Hang we on. Go, so that line is parallel to that line? Yes, that's right. Uh, we said parallel lines are lines that, that don't intersect. So they don't intersect. And now through this point, we can draw another um, uh, straight line that's parallel to this. And we can draw another. So all these circles are, are perpendicular to the boundary and going through this point. So the, so the fifth axiom, Euclid's fifth axiom is, is, is failing here. And we have this new world, this new plane, where we have a consistent geometry. And the notion of um, what it means to live in this world can be explored. So when all these ideas were being absorbed, um, you could say, well, what is this thinking about mathematics? What is this game we're playing about, about math? And this is really the essence of uh, where is it that we depart from, and, and what is it that we produce when we get there? So if we have these worlds, what does it mean to, to have mathematical truth? There are subtle questions about this notion of math being um, uh, 
connected fundamentally with proof, uh, whereas science is connected to accuracy and observation. And truth is this subtle metaphysical thing that um, is in between or independent. Psychologically, we, when, we, when we create things mathematically, when we make these rules, we don't really study this one object by itself. We kind of study the interrelationships between other objects and the connections between them. So in the sense that we can produce a theory which is interesting, when we can see connections, then people get turned on and, and, and this is what fuels future questions. So even these questions about what it means, this axiom, as soon as this was discovered, more questions were asked about the thing you just said. What does it mean? And people discovered that you, trying to put the foundations of mathematics on pure logical footing cannot work. Part of the game in mathematics, whether you're doing what is called geometry or something else, is really understanding where to start, what things to take as axioms, where to build from. They did away with the fifth axiom and they produced this amazing thing, hyperbolic geometry. Right. Have people meddled with striking out the other axioms? Like, what does, what does a geometry look like without the third axiom? Or is that, is that not something you can do? Sure, you could do it. So the third axiom was about, point, was about circles. So uh, the parallel axiom turned out to be the key because of this notion of curvature, if, and which is kind of easy to see on a sphere. So this is a notion of positive curvature and kind of um, the idea that st straightness, that straight lines kind of um, are pushed together. And in a neg negatively curved world, on a hyperbolic plane, things are spread out. And on a flat world, they're not. <laughs> to understand exponential growth, you really need to write down the metric, which requires some calculus. But um, as a consequence of the metric, we can see that, um, that as, you, as points kind of diverge from each other, they're, they're diverging exponentially. So if you think about um, two lines starting out here, then as um, you move along in time, we're bending apart further and further but in this, space. But they are straight lines in. Straight lines and, re and remaining parallel then. <laughs> so train tracks, for example, would not work in this, in this world. So this is the book that I found here at MSRI in the library, and it's, there it is, Non-Euclidean Tessellations in the Group. So this is a story about more uh, of this new hyperbolic world and these other non-Euclidean geometries. And the thing that really excited me about it is, is it reminded me that mathematics really is um, a, hum a human endeavor. And this book belonged to a mathematical giant, uh, William Thurston, and there, there is his, his name in the book itself, and I thought that that was pretty neat. Did you get excited by that? Like, when <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, you get to, to hold uh, in your hand, and you get kind of connected in these, with these ideas. And this is really how mathematics is done. What we see is um, uh, straight lines in the Euclidean plane. So maybe real quick, since we said that we had one model of the Euclidean plane, which is um, this upper half space, then um, using uh, um, uh, complex analysis is some some function theory. Then we can uh, map this space into this this space, and these um, straight lines that look like this in this world. This guy would uh, now become a, a diameter of this circle, something like that. And this guy is again a circle perpendicular to the boundary. So, so the straight was the straight that still, like, that was that. Like, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, okay. So in this, in this world, uh, this hyperbolic, this is a model for the hyperbolic plane, and um, it's a bit more um, useful for some things, uh, understanding hyperbolic geometry than this one. In particular, we can get uh, this picture. So this picture is, um, has to be understood in the following sense, that the line there along the edge is not a part of the hyperbolic plane. It represents um, the boundary here, the real line, and uh, a point at infinity. And the interior of this disk is the hyperbolic plane. And what we see are a tiling of um, the plane by hyper hyperbolic um, polynomials. So this is a quadrilateral. It has one, two, three, four sides. And 
So that, that's a hyperbolic quadrilateral. That's right. It doesn't have to have one straight side like that, though. Have... E, you, you see that um, here's a straight line, here's a straight line, and here's a straight line, and here's a straight line. And so the fact that, um, that these points are as so on the boundary, uh, we call this an ideal, um, uh, an ideal uh, parallelogram. Let's see if we can find a different one. These are uh, ideal. Uh, here, here's one that's not. So look at these triangles. So this is the hyperbolic plane again, and um, it's tessellating the plane. And you see that um, now we have intersection not at the boundary, but um, inside the interior. But again, we have a tessellation. It, it, it's, there's a tiling um, of the whole plane by, by this triangle. This is interesting because it points out a difference of hyperbolic, the hyperbolic plane with the Euclidean plane and, and, it, and the types of tiles we can have. So, for example, in the um, Euclidean plane, we can only tile, and uh, you're familiar from looking at the, the floor in your bathroom, uh, we can only tile the Euclidean plane with the triangles or squares or hexagons, regular, those regular uh, polygons. But in the hyperbolic plane, we can get a tiling for any n, um, any n greater than 6. The, the, the geometry of the tilings is, is tied into um, the... the the, the theory of surfaces. So if we then um, were to pursue further this idea of uh, Riemannian geometry, we see that the, 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 the unifying object in, in, in these um, different worlds are, are surfaces.